Hi, and welcome to this video where we're going to look at creating a quick and simple cell shader to apply to our rendered objects in Modo. Uh, I've started with this, just uh, one of the preset items in the, uh, in the spacecraft uh, heading under the uh, vehicles in the Modo preset library. And uh, we're going to look at this and apply a cell shader to it pretty quickly and pretty easily. And we'll look at how we could apply that to an entire scene over different materials and anything like that. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look over to the to the shader tree here. Now, it has the default space turret uh, shader on it. I've also created a, a quick metal, uh, not really much on the way of metal shader, but something with a little bit more variation than just this plain plastic that comes on it by default here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to click on the base shader, notice here, because uh, at the very top of this, I want to add a gradient. So with this gradient on here, I'm going to set it to incidence. So uh, facing us versus facing off to a glancing angle <clears throat> is how this uh, will will change. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at <coughs> excuse me at the uh, just facing angle. It's going to be white, and then I'm just going to middle mouse click down here. At 100%, I'm going to add another point on the gradient. I'll pull that all the way down to black. And then here in the middle, I'm just going to click again and add a, a gray point there. So again, middle mouse click will add in points on the gradient. And you can see now that we're getting a bit of a fall off here. So as it gets facing a bit more away from us, the, the material is getting darker. Now, that's not exactly the look that we're looking for for a cell shaded look. We want that kind of banded color difference. Uh, the, the very uh, strong definition between um, highlight, mid-tone, and um, shadow. So what I'm going to do is, with those three points selected on the graph, I'm going to change over to stepped. You can see pretty quickly we're getting a be much better idea of this cell shaded look. Now the nice thing about this is you have a lot of control. You can control how far in the, uh, the midpoint goes, for example, by dragging this point left to right. I usually like to put it a little past halfway. You can control how light or how dark those mid-tones mid mid are by dragging this up and down. And you can also adjust here our shadow. And as you pull this in closer, we'll start to see a bit of a black line come in on the glancing angles, and it'll kind of heighten our shadows a little bit. You can see that it, it uh, provides a bit more definition to some of the details on this object. All right. And you can also even control you know, how light the, uh, the highlights are. You could pull them out entirely here and, um, and make them very bright. Um, however, this will cause a bit of, uh, of an issue when we get to um, applying this over some other materials. So if you want to just do it this way, you should be in pretty good shape. However, now we're going to look here. I'm going to turn the gradient off for a minute. I'm going to turn on this um, you know, metal texture. It's basically just a noise applied to both the diffuse color and the um, roughness. So I've gotten a little bit of breakup in both my specular highlight and my uh, my color on it. So just doing this to illustrate that this can be uh, laid over you know, some other materials. So now what I'll do is I'll go and I will turn that gradient back on and instead of normal I'm going to change this to multiply. And you can do this a couple of different ways. Multiply in my opinion tends to give pretty uh, decent results on almost any model and any underlying texture. However, you can also look at some of the different uh, blending modes might give you better options. Uh, on some objects, um, typically I've noticed smooth objects, the overlay works a bit better. You get, get some patchy color um, if uh, you get bright areas on it, so, which may be something that you want, maybe not. Um, and also the soft light I found tends to give uh, some nice effect, except it will tend to lighten up the scene a bit. But you know, for most things, I like to keep it on multiply. And you still get to see a bit of your um, underlying material, but you can, um, but you can get this definite cell shaded look over the top. Now, one extra note here is that you know, here we've got this is essentially a, a three-step uh, cell shade. We have the the lightest tones, the mid tones, and the shadows. You can uh, give a little bit further definition here. I'm going to move this one up into the left, and then I'm going to middle mouse click here, and I'm going to select this point, and oops, let's uh, undo that camera move that I'd actually done there, and I'm just going to 
Oops. Oh, that just wants to keep doing that, doesn't it? Just gonna middle mouse click in here. Wow. Let's get our camera angle back to where it was. So then with middle mouse click here, I'm going to add another point. Again, I'm going to change my slope to stepped. And I'm going to pull this one down. So now you can see that instead of just the, uh, the three tones, I'm getting uh, kind of a fourth tone in there. And so I can, again, also adjust these. So I'm going to take my, uh, my highlight area back down to one. And I'm going to pull down my my two mid-tone areas a bit there. You can see we're getting a relatively nice effect here. So I'm going to close that up and open up a larger preview window here so we can get a little bit better look at it. And you know, no matter how many other textures we happen to have underneath this, we'll, we'll still get this effect. So let's uh, close this out of the way for a minute. And I'm just going to go in here very quickly. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to go in here and select oops. Um, just this area off here, and I'm going to give another material, I'll call it uh, Metal 2, and to this one I'm just going to give it uh, kind of a, an orange color. And one thing you'll notice is you add materials that are going to add above the gradient, so you want to drag that gradient back in above the, uh, the color layer, and again you'll be all set up. Those uh, banded colors will pop right in, and you'll end up with, uh, with that cell shaded look over, over the top of it. Um, it works particularly well, I've found, with, uh, with uh, more vibrant colors in there. So instead of, if I go instead of these uh, kind of uh, grayish colors, I'm going to go back to this material. I'm going to turn off the noise for the color value. I'm going to leave it on the spec, but turn it off for the color, and I'm going to add kind of, a, uh, kind of a dusty blue onto here. And pull it on. You can see we get that effect pretty nicely on there. So again, I'll open up the larger preview so you can get a quicker look at it. Now, uh, there's, there's a lot more that we can do with this. I'm not going to cover it all here in this short video. just wanted to give a quick intro to how you can start playing around with this and uh, getting some nice results. It can apply to much more complex objects and scenes and shading um, uh, trees here. Uh, you can get some nice effects. Um, you can even do it onto uh, something as complex as a car. You can see the interiors getting it. Um, and this one I've even applied a bit of an outline to. I can, oops, I can uh, turn that off quickly too if I, if I want to. And you can see that we're getting that, uh, that effect over this entire vehicle, even though the reflections are staying uh, crisp and uh, nice. That will give you, uh, you know, a nice sense of realism to go along with the, uh, with the cell shaded look there. So, just something to keep in mind. Playing around a little bit, you can, uh, you can do quite a bit with this. So, hope you have fun with this. Hope that it's useful, and I will see you in another video. Bye for now.